See, I'm I'm making my rookie mistake. Welcome to Watch Mustafa. It is not a good time for me. I am upset on so many levels. I am upset at myself. I'm upset at fans. I'm upset at the pundits. I'm upset at the coaches. I'm upset at the parents. There's no one who is beyond my focus right now. So, before we get into dissecting this game, I got some stuff to get off my chest. And this might be explicit. And I can do that because I don't have any FCC rules. So, I'm not employed by anybody but myself. Let's start off with... What I want to start off with. Let's start off with this. It's hard to get into conversations on Twitter because you're character limited. But I got into this nice talk with Jeff Fugit. And I hope I'm saying this last name wrong. I mean, right. I said wrong. That's not the right thing to say. About coaching. And it's been the coach's responsibility. It's just the coach's fault. All of it falls upon the coaches. And damn, it, it sure does. It does. Because they are the ones that are getting paid. They are the ones who the who is the face, the leader of the program. So definitely they're going to get the blame. As being a player who's played on college, high school, and professional teams. When you get into college, it's on the damn players. There's not really that much coaching that goes on, to be honest with you, if you think about it. Like when you're in Little League, the most coaching goes on in Little League with the right program. Then it's a little bit less in high school. Then it's a little less in college. And there's really no coaching in the pros, to be honest with you. As far as teaching the game. When you get into college, that game on Saturday was about leadership and execution. Leadership and execution. When an offense is running beautifully and we run the damn ball 56 times against Ole Miss, oh, everybody's happy. But when we get in the game where we have 30-some plays totally, we had... 36 freaking plays in the whole damn game. And then I said, now I'm going to start going off on tangents. And then I'm fucking tired of hearing people talk about, oh, well, get C-Rod the ball more. He got the damn ball nine times. He had the most rushes. He had nine carries. What you going to do? We had 23 fucking rushing um, attempts. He got nine. Rose got five. Terry got five. And I don't know if you can count those five because some of them are on passes. So are you fucking telling me that you see A.J. Rose run and you can say that C-Rod would get 10, 15 more yards than A.J. Rose when he had the longest damn carry of the game? He had five carries for 43 yards. I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of sick of that. Give C-Rod the ball more. He got the damn ball more. Oh, well, he bust off that 17-yard run to lead to a touchdown. And why didn't he get the ball to him the next time? Well, why didn't you say that when, and when A.J. Rose ran off the 29-yard run to lead to the damn field goal where he dropped the pass? That's frustrating. If, if A.J. Rose was horrible, one thing. The guy, so players win games, period. It's execution. I played on a team. I played on some bad Kentucky football teams. I'm not, 
I'm not afraid to say I played on some bad teams. I played on one bad team. And even that team should have won five games. When you look back at it. Played on two, four, and seven teams that should have won six or seven. Played on a six and five team that went to the Peach Bowl that should have won eight. So, I had some really damn good defensive coordinators. I had um, Coach Mike Archer, who went on to the down Pittsburgh Steelers to be the linebacker coach, who was LSU head coach when I was a young kid coming up. The guy knows defense. He makes some damn good calls in the damn players poorly executed, and we get burnt. I played, I played with Coach Smith, who was my DB coach all four years. He went on the two lane when they won, when they went undefeated that year. He was defensive coordinator. They know football. They know defenses. And we fucked up some of their calls. Not some, a lot of them. Cause we poorly executed on, on game day. That has nothing to do with, with during the week. That has nothing to do with a game plan. That has to do with leaders. And like, if you watch my show with Anthony White, I'm going to plug my show with Anthony White Tuesday and Thursdays, uh, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I had my former teammate LT on there uh, last week or two, two weeks ago where A. White had him on there. And we reminisce about the time where I got on players. It's about leadership. Where I come from, expectations are, are to a certain level. And we have to own up. We got to look at ourselves. Then we got to look at the teammates to get them to do what the damn right thing to do. We didn't have enough leadership that game. We were not doing defensively what we were supposed to do. Period. We were too inconsistent. Now, we had some plays where we damn balled out. There was too many other plays where we damn let our guard down and then give our brother I 100% because all it takes is one guy on defense. It really does. All it takes is one guy to fuck it up and the whole damn day is fucked up. Trust me. I, I, I don't know how many times I told this story. Coach, Coach Smith called a 100% perfect call. He got a middle linebacker blitz. The wrong damn linebacker blitz and they went to where he was supposed to be. And they fucking scored. It was a man to man, and no one saw the running back get the ball. And it was six. He hit his head on the goalpost. Although coach called the perfect, he called the perfect blitz for this. If the guys executed, he would have went right into that hole. He would have stuffed them right on the line of scrimmage. It's about execution. Then I, I I did these plays. I cut up a couple plays to highlight execution. We did not execute well. Point blank. And that is a leadership deal. That's all it is. Everybody's got to be held accountable. And it takes a leader to hold each other accountable. So, one thing I want to say before I go on, and I, I forget to say this first. You can hit me up on Periscope and look into that. and Or you can tweet me on Twitter if you have any questions, comments. Or you want to come at me. You can at me today. Because I got time. The other thing that pissed me off, we have a damn parent of a leader on the, of the program saying stuff on Twitter. It's unacceptable. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Everybody on this team, we're trying to win. If, if your kid is not getting it done, he's going to get, that's life. I don't get it. It's life. Are you going to come to his job? When, come on, man. Get off a of damn Twitter. If you're not supporting the program, it's not a good look. It's not. My man A. White says the same thing. It's not a good look. I know I'm, I turn 45 in a week, but this week, so maybe I'm old. But that's one thing that should stand the test of time. You have a problem with the coach. You call the coach. You, you text the coach. You get in contact with the coach. And you talk to him one on one, not through Twitter. Too many people see it. Not only do you, not only do I see it, not only do the coaches see it, not only does the opponent see it, the recruits see it, the high school parents see it. That's a lot. And your son has been given the keys to the program. 
And I have defended him for I don't know how long. But that right there is unacceptable. He's been given the keys. And he has a damn good record as a quarterback. But that doesn't mean he's exempt from being criticized or freaking benched. I've been benched. And I'm going to say, and I, I can say this now. And I had eight fucking picks in my career at Kentucky. I don't think there's anybody after that except Trevor Lindley that I think he had 10. Since 93, since 96 when I left, I don't think there's anybody but one guy who's had as many picks as I had as a corner. And I was benched. So, if you're not getting it done on Saturday, those coaches are getting paid to win. And if they feel like you're not doing enough to win, you're going to get benched. I got a lot more to rant about, but but I'm sick and I need some water probably. So, let's get into this, this game. Oh, boy. This is frustrating. And... I said this through my tweet, so I'm just gonna. It's gonna. If you saw that, it's gonna be um, a rehash. But if you watch the LSU game from a couple weeks ago, LSU just shredded them with the pass game. Shredded them. They had a, a tight end Gilbert and and Marshall had 200 yards. Two, Marshall himself had 200 plus, 230 plus yards catching. And then Gibbs start off the game killing them because Missouri likes to play man. So what we do, we try to get them out of the box since we know they're going to play man. We're going to get them out of this because we feel like they're going to freaking load the box and we spread them out to get the box a little freer and see if they're going to play man. Like I said on a tweet today, this is a perfect fucking call. Oops, let me get that out the way. Why don't you look at this guy? Tell me if he's not wide the fuck open. Now, also, while you watch, I want you to look at these other receivers and see if they are doing their best to cause separation and get open. The guy at the bottom, he's not open. He's ham. Now, this guy, that's separation. That's separation. Get the ball out in front. He's got one, two steps. This guy's actually starting to fall a little bit. One, out in front, and Upshaw might be running still to this day. Because he's going to carry this little DB. This little DB better freaking try to clip his heels. Because if he try to jump on his back, Upshaw might carry him to the end zone. This is... The perfect call if the ball is thrown out in front. I want to show that again because this shit bothers me. People complain, oh, we don't take shots. Oh, we don't take shots. Oh, we don't do this. Then we fucking take a shot. Then, oh, well, why don't we go throw a bread butter? Why don't we run the ball? This is perfect call, poor execution. If this ball is thrown over the top, this might be six. And it's simple as that. You cannot tell me that this guy is not open. He's wide open for college. He's wide open. Put the ball on him, and that's six. Now, I don't even not put the ball on him. We threw the fucking ball out of bounds. It's not even catchable. Because even if he catches, he's out of bounds. So now, is that on the coach or that on the player? Now, some people are going to say, well, we, 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 we know we will be what we got. No, you got to, you got to test the team. You got to test them. Next play. Why don't you look at this guy right here? Now, I've been talking about this for day one as a corner. If you get your hands on a receiver, it's ball game. If I got my hands on a receiver, if I touched you, it was ball game. I'm going to disrupt everything. If I'm able to get my hands on you, it's the disruption to the utmost. 
The time is going to be disrupted because I'm going to hit the hell out of you. And I'm going to, and I'm going to hit you with my hands and I'm going to jam you and it's going to cause all time is gone. Watch what Daly does at the bottom. Just want to see. And this guy is outside of him. So inside is barbecue chicken. Watch what he does. He goes right to him and then he stops and does. He gives him nothing. He gives him no fake. He runs right into him. Takes a couple chatter steps. And then the, the things he can beat him across the face as he ran across. Now, let me get this. Let me say this too. This is a horrible pass. This is a horrible pass. But I'm also going to say this. This the pass is horrible. There's some confusion in this play. There's some miscommunication because Riggs does not get this linebacker, and we have an offensive lineman downfield. Is this an RPO? Still, Horsey shouldn't be downfield. Second thing is as a quarterback. When I played in high school, I had a favorite receiver, and I knew he was going to get open all the time. This is your favorite receiver. He's one-on-one. You know it's one-on-one right now. He's playing against off man. I'm trusting my boy is going to beat him every time. There's nobody in the middle. Nobody. Watch this. He's open. Right there. He's open. You just got to get it to him. He's not wide open, but he's open. And look, even with Horsey down the field, if you get it to Ali right here, and if he breaks this tackle, there's nobody out there. Nobody out there. He could be still running himself if he breaks that tackle. That was a horrible throw. Is that on coaching? Oh, I forgot. Talking about the Boise State thing. Ah, Jeff Fugit. I, I went on a tangent. Recruiting is the hardest thing to do. Recruiting is extremely difficult, especially when you're dealing with these young kids. It is extremely difficult. I'm, I'm sorry I'm interrupting but it's extremely difficult because you can only get who you get you can scour to damn Mars if the Martians don't want to come to Kentucky they're not going to come and there's more to it than just a style of play as I said Boise State played in a garbage ass conference they play in the Mountain West kids like winning all right and when they went, they started winning the Mountain West, then they started getting some players, not studs, but just some players. But their competition was weak. So they put up big numbers. Then they beat the Oklahoma of, in a bowl game. And that's when people start to get, ooh, Boise State. We are recruiting as well as we can. We're in fucking Kentucky. You're not going to get the greatest of the great players. Just not going to happen. I'm sorry. We're getting close though. At key positions. You have to develop within the state. A few wide receivers that come to Kentucky. And then. That's when things change. And I, I hope my. 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 My brother Dante Key is listening. Get his son Dane Key in. I hope Crowder um, continues to come. Um, and they develop. Because all we're missing is explosiveness. That's all. We need one explosive player. Because as a corner, I'm telling you. As a former corner. I don't respect. And this is just from, this is the mentality. 
as a corner. I didn't respect any wide receiver that I knew that couldn't beat me deep. I don't care if he's the best route runner in the world. My confidence and my ability was out the roof. And like I said, I had eight interceptions in an age where they were not passing the ball that much. And I intercepted some of the best, Eric Zaire, and I intercepted Peyton Manning. So it wasn't like I was intercepting garbage players. If you didn't have a guy who I feared that could beat me deep, I I sat on everything. Everything. People wonder why, oh, he's sitting on routes. Yeah, hey, yes. If you can't beat me deep, why am I, why am I backpedaling all fast for if you can't beat me deep? If you can't outrun me, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And that's our problem. We don't have anybody that makes a corner fearful. And because of that, it makes a playing corner is all about confidence. And I got all this confidence that you can't beat me. Now, all everything goes on to another level. It goes to another level. I'm just telling you, it goes to another. If I feel like you cannot catch a fade right on me, then I'm not. I'm gonna play as aggressive as possible. And that's our problem. We have no one that strikes fear in a corner's heart. So all this recruiting stuff, all oh, what well, we have recruited some damn good receivers that just didn't come. I'm gonna tell you one. I saw the kid play personally. Devontae Lee played with Amani Gilmore at a mid, Louisiana. The guy was a stud. Now, was he polished? Far from it. He was raw as raw can be. But he was an athlete. And he went to LSU, and now they got him playing a damn linebacker. We told him, Coach Smith told him, whom has some inroads in Louisiana because he's from here. Told him we will play you at receiver and we couldn't get him. He had ties to the home freaking state. Don't get me with this. We're not recruiting well enough. We're doing everything possible to get everybody that we can. We had one guy that went to freaking Nebraska. We had one guy that went to damn Purdue. It wasn't like we didn't try our damn best to get the best Damn talent within the state. That's what you fucking need. You need you need one receiver. In college, all you need is one. That's why Alabama's freaking crazy because they got three, four, five, six. All you need is one. Texas Tech had one guy, Michael Crabtree, that struck fear in people's heart. All we need is one. If you have one, that makes Ali job easier. That makes Bryce Oliver job easier. That makes Daly job easier. When we had Josh, when we had Lynn Bolton, him being a threat on the field made everybody else job that much easier. Because people had a fear that he can beat them deep. When we had Juice Johnson, the same thing. Not the greatest route runner, but he, the fear of him beating you deep changes all coverages. It makes a defense play, secondary play, just a little bit softer. Just a little. That's all you need. I advise, go look at the LSU tape against Missouri and see how differently they play. They didn't press LSU receivers at all. Marshall shredded them. Not at all. They pressed us. You know why? No fear. Simple as that. No fucking fear. Now we got to play with what we have. We got to play with what we have. But don't give me this shit about Boise State and them recruiting and all this stuff. We fucking try our damn best to get the best receivers. If they don't want to come, that's all we can do. Okay, I'm sorry. I spent a little bit too much time on that. But I said I was going to rant. So this might be intermittent rants. This is a horrible throw. But the receiver did not help him at all either. 
That was a horrible route with a horrible throw. Two wrongs. Now this is close. If one of these offensive linemen get this guy, all I got to do is peel back. If one of them guys peel back, we might have a shot because we got guys on guys. We got hats on hats. We got hats on hats. All we got to do is miss that one. Miss the one. And as I'm going to show you on defense, all it takes is one guy. See that one guy? And he barely got there. If he doesn't slow him down, we got three guys on one and we still moving down the field, landing, is getting that guy. And now all you got to do is make one guy miss. That was closer than what you think. Now our linebackers took a step back in this game. Let me see if I have the, did I keep the end zone? No, I didn't. Let me go back. This is the hardest thing to do, and it takes some some maturity. But we should be at that level now. Jordan Wright's got to be a junior by now. All right. They run a flea flicker, and we didn't really cover it that great, but we did all right. As linebackers, you see this guy here? Jamin is doing great. Jordan Wright's got to get depth. It's easier coming downhill to make a tackle than to try to go laterally. He gets sucked up and he doesn't retrace. You got to retrace to your zone. He has curl flat. When he come up, when he comes up, he even sees the guy. You can't hug on him because there's usually guys coming behind you. You got to get depth to protect the deeper route. Then come up. If he comes up at a greater angle, he makes this tackle. But he's too flat. That's that's a tough tackle. And then Jamin takes a bad angle. I don't know what's up with these shirts, though. I mean, we've seen our C. Rod had his shirt pull. Uh, somebody else we played shirt pull. And now this game. What's what's up with these new Nike shirts? This is getting out of hand. That was, I don't know, man. There's a lot going on in this play that's mind boggling, but we still don't do a bad job. This is great. Replace. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. As I've said before, this software sometimes is a little finicky. I can't call why, but um, this game defensively, as I get the film back up, is pure inconsistency. We cannot be inconsistent on defense, and, and it's and it's bad that I play on defense. If you look at that '96 Louisville game, look at I think at halftime there was three first downs total combined by both offenses. I've been on the field three and out. And I'm telling you, it's not that bad when you're only on the field three plays and the offense only on the field three plays. It's really not that bad. The problem is when you don't get off the damn field and you're on the field for six plays, then your offense is off the field. If you take care of your job, which is your responsibility, then it's not that bad. Guys, I'm still having trouble. Let's let's see what can happen. So just while I'm trying to get this thing to work. So what I'm talking about is, for example, that 21 play drive at at beginning of the second half. And I know I'm only talking about the first half, but I try. I got to get this this software responding. I know I know I'm only talking about the first half today, but the 21 play drive. At at um after half has nothing to do with offense. Zero. So so defense can't say shit about the offense 
not doing what they're supposed to do because it's got nothing to do with them. That 21 play drive is on you. You had all halftime to fucking rest. All halftime to rest. So don't, so don't give me that. All right. Don't give me that. That's nonsense. You got to get off the field. So as I was saying, this is a great job of replacing by Eccles. Now defensively, we, that's not bad. That's really not bad. And we got them third and four. Now we got to get off the field. Now, I want you to see something. This is the freaking line of scrimmage. This is the guys closest to the quarterback. This is the first down marker. I want you to tell me. Is oops, I went too far. Let's see if I go back. He is. I'm just I know how many yards he's one, two, three, four yards. On the line of scrimmage. Is this guy blocking downfield? Tell me. Is he not blocking downfield? Is he not freaking blocking downfield? You can't block. Now he can. And this is a great play by. I think this Jordan Wright. This is what I see. What I say on defense, shoot your shot. He comes up field, he's contained. Defense is simple. As long as you play hard, he has contained. If he doesn't make the tackle, he wants to turn him into this guy right here who's running like a scalding dog. If you don't make the tackle, handle your responsibility, which is to turn him in. That is perfect. Now we get him behind the chain. Now we got to get off the damn field. Second and four. Great drop. Great call. Great discipline. Let me see. If you can see it. I thought I did. There's an end zone. I might just freaking try to get through this because I was so pissed. This is a great scheme. And I, I'm pretty sure this is the great thing about the 3-4. When this back went away, it's called green dog in a blitz. I don't know what it's called in a 3-4 because it's not a real blitz. That frees him up. And this, oops, and this, um, defense end went inside and allowed square to come outside, put pressure. See that? Now he comes. Everybody's engaged. You got a free rush. Great job. They was trying to go left. Now, third and long, got to get off the field. Good job. Now, offense. You're not inside the 10. You're on the 15. We got to get a couple first downs. Now, since someone tell me about this, will C-Rod have gotten 10 more yards? Explain to me that. If have if would C Rod have gotten ten more yards? Great blocking, first down. Well, third and one. C Rod comes. Now we get a first try. Oh, whoa! Is that not Chris Rodriguez? He didn't get into the game. Get the. Now this is on Terry. It's hard to see from this, but there is, I want to see these white hats. Let me see if I can pull up this, see if we can get this a little better. There's a white hat, there's a white hat, one, two. Then there's one, two, three. So that's all of offensive alignment, okay? There is a hole. There is a hole. If you look at these three guys, those two, you look at those two, there is a hole 
right in there. And this is the only guy that's unblocked. And I say this all the time. Our running back got to make one guy miss. All Terry had to do was go behind. I'm not sure. See my point of this helmet? I had to go was go here. And if he does, he at least gets two yards. At least. If he shakes him, he gets more than that. But he runs into the back. Now, you can see the hole better now. You got here, those two guys. Then you got this wall here. There is a hole, and this guy's bracing for it. There is a hole right there that we need to attack. Not right on the back of our, you can see even more here. There was a hole right there. That's not the big blue wall's fault. Now that put us behind the freaking chains. Now, this is another bad pass. It throws off the timing. Won't you look at Drake and imagine if AJ catches the ball on time. Now, he has to turn around, take a couple steps and gather. If he caught the ball and was taking one step away now, now it'll be harder for this DB to go around Drake. Because Drake would be in phase with the running back. We got to make, that's a, that's a layup. That's a layup. Those are the ones that we can't miss. Now, this one bothers me too. Because we I, we had our mind made up too early. We had our mind made up too early. We in third and eight. Watch Drake. Watch me rig. If we patient. There's nobody over here. Because they're a man. We ran them off. With an over route. Over route. We run these guys deep. Which is perfect play design. Then we come underneath with here. Throw the jack. Throw the drag route. It's wide open. Watch. Because they're playing man. If he's patient. Rig is open. He had enough time in the pocket. To be patient. When. When. Ali came across the middle. And he double pumped. Because he wanted them early. But they had that safety that robbed him. When he pumped. Right there. When he pumped, he was looking for him there. Now it's time to come here. He's open. All he had to do was look, throw it here. There's no one out there. No one out there. And this is a great play design that they killed LSU with a couple weeks ago that we only held in the six yard. That's pretty good. Now, this is another play. That bothered me. This is playing your responsibility. Now, as I said in the past, I don't know the defense that well. It's not my defense. So I can't say without a shadow of a doubt this or that. All right. So take my comments as comments because I'm not in the meeting room. But. When we ran defenses on both levels, on all levels that I played in. If this guy's crashing, which means he's contained. Now he's not contained because he's crashed now. And Missouri did this a couple of times. That means this linebacker has to replace his responsibility. Because in essence, Boogie is taking Square's job. But either there's a miscommunication, the player's doing what they don't want to do, and now we got both guys in the wash. 
Now the quarterback is out the gate. That is on, I would say, with the way Boogie crashed, I think it's on square. Now, I could be wrong. It could be on Boogie. But if you crash like that, why are we in such a hurry? Here, So we give him like 13 free yards. That's a way to stuff that hole. It did, so if you look at this, people are going to say, well, um, Roundtree just tripped. No. Square pushed this lineman into him and knocked him down. Watch. Square. Now he can keep his outside on free, but he hits the lineman into the back. You see that? He hits the lineman and to the back. That's a great feel. Now, I would like to have us also on free. What are we doing? Are we watching the game or are we playing the game? Are we watching the game or are we playing the game? Now, this is when we got to get off the field. And this is great coverage. Now, almost the first quarter is over with. The defense has played pretty damn good football. That's not bad. Their offense is getting off the field. Our offense is getting off the field. Let me let me look at the drive chart real quick. So in that first quarter, I'm trying to get to it, y'all. We had three plays. They had seven. We had six. They had five. So that's we're we're not tired. This is the stuff that bothers me. Now I know this is a a give. And the reason why I know it's a give, because Rig is coming backside to block the guy whom we read. But we need to learn from now, although that's that's a call run, give it to Rodriguez. We need to understand what is a crash and what is not, and when he slow play. Now I ran the sprint option in college in, in high school too. If that guy was hesitant and not coming at me, I was pulling it every time. Now, you can't do that in college because you have really good backs. But still, if he's hesitant, you have him beat because he's at a standstill, and hopefully my quarterback can beat the defense in in a race, especially when they're playing man-to-man -man on the backside. There's no one else looking out for you. That's a C-Rod run for two yards, y'all. That's a good play by that safety. Oh, now this is a play I talked about. I drew up on Twitter. All right. They're not blocking him now. So they're reading him. And they have two backs in the backfield, which means AJ is going to be his pitch guy if he comes out. This is undoubtedly a pull you pull that he's slow playing even if let's say he's faster than you you know they're playing man let's say you you take the ball here and pitch it the next guy that's available is almost 10 yards downfield aj rose on a safety one-on-one -on -one, i have my money on aj rose this is a pull. This is a definite pull. 
and it's to the field. So that's a lot of room AJ has. That's a pull. Pull the ball, and now let's go to work. This is another play. LSU killed them on. I'm gonna tell you why this is this is a big play. All right. So the width of a field is about 53 and a third, right? He's on a hash. So we got a lot of field to work with. I know you can't see it, but we got basically from the hash, from the hash to the sideline on this side of the field. That's like 15 yards of room. You want to run away. You want to get some separation and run away from him. We can't do that. We run to him. Now he gets his hands on us. And now it's disrupted. Now. I'm not dissolving Terry anything. Because this game was not, not good at all. Just wasn't good. The receivers. Got to make his job easy. That's period. They got to make his job easy. And you can't do that. It's third and five. That. Cause a drive. Not only that, we lose 10 yards, which if we don't get no yards, we probably, they start probably at 25 instead of the 35. That's one last first down that now a Missouri has to get. Now we have to come. We got to come. We got to come. I'm going to tell you one guy who runs, and that's one, Josh Pascal. I want you to see these guys running. This is unacceptable. We're in zone. We should have eyes on a quarterback. We should be coming like a scalding dog. I'm a big Corker fan. Big. That's not getting it done. You know how many fumbles? Oh, I mean, we just saw a play last night by DK Metcalf. You know how many fumbles I've seen teammates miss because they don't accelerate until it's too late? They could have easily picked it up and scored. But nah, they take the play for granted. Look at 29. Is that is that running? No, that's not. It's unacceptable. Now, this play. I don't know if that's carry, but all it takes is one guy. One guy. I don't know if we're in nickel. Now, they got us some this game when we went to nickel. I'm not sure if that's carry or not. He goes under a block, and they, boom, go right to where he should be. This is what I mean by poor execution. Who has contain? Why he's running inside the block? It doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. None at all. Why would you run under that tight end? Why won't you take him on? But you should be keeping your outside on free. That's mental mistake that causes us too many yards. And that's Kerry. Kerry didn't have his best game this, this game. He's young. It happens. Playing a different position. Not shot, but now we come back. This is the inconsistency. We just gave them a shit ton of yards just now. And now the defensive front does what they're supposed to. We have good fits. And that goes nowhere. Good fits goes nowhere. Now we got them a second and long. We got to win. We got to win. Again, they got us a nickel. Now, I'm not sure if we not miss a line. Because it looks like Pascal is almost in a three technique. 
which means we got 201. This is just, nah, maybe not. Ah, we got to get off blocks. We got to get off blocks. They just beat us on that one. We got we to gotta do a better job getting off blocks. Second and 14 because they got a chop block, I think. So now we still got behind the chains. Now they, they, they gave us one. We have to make that tackle. We got to make that tackle. I raved about Eccles all last year. He's got to come. He's, you are contained. You got to turn that thing into square. If you turn it into square, it's third and 10 plus. Third and 10 plus, but nope, now it's third and 10. Now, I rave about Jamin. We got to be coming downhill as linebackers. Mm -hmm. Fill that gap so we don't get them too much yards. Now, it's fourth and five. Now, I, Doc said, I analyzed this play on Twitter. This was one of my uh, plays I dissected. We in rolling cover three. I used to love this in the boundary as a corner because I don't have to go anywhere because I got a guy over the top of me. It's fourth and five. You know they're trying to get this is how many times I talk about knowing down the distance and situation. You know they're trying to get right here. You beat him up. You stand strong. Make him go. I would preferably you be outside and press them inside, but stay on them because there's no other threat over here. You are basically man to man. You know why? Because you got a guy over the top of you. There's no way he can beat you deep because you got a guy safeguarding you. You playing him aggressive man to man. There's no other threat out here. There's no other receiver. The other three receivers are over here. Here's the other three receivers. You have no other threat. You beat him up. And you playing this like man to man, like he's running something short. See, easy. This is a perfect call. Coach White dialed up the perfect damn call for fourth and five, and we give him fucking ten. That's not coaching. This again. We got to get. We got to be running. You dissected the play. It's a sprint option. We got to be running. You cannot let this guy get on you. Got to read your keys. It's about execution. Simple as that. Again. Coach White just dialed up another perfect call. Corner blitz. And Roundtree cut the zone read back. Bam. That is the perfect call. <laughs> That's the perfect call. I don't know what else you want from a coach. Now we come back. There's the inconsistency. Now we have a great play. Great rally. Great job by Bully. One yard. Now we got him in second and nine. Now we got to keep him in second and nine. Hold him to a field goal. Great job by Bully. Now we got to come up and make this tackle. That's halfway decent. We gave him too much on that. Now it's third and six. This is something that I harp on a lot. You got to know your responsibility. Jordan Wright has curl the flat. You also got to know what's behind you. He went out. He's not in the flat. He's got curl to flat. He should be right here, really inside of that guy. But since he spread out, now here's the other thing. We got to be looking at the quarterback. Who is the quarterback looking at the whole time? He's looking there. I'm peeking there. 
Look at his head. Look at the quarterback's head. He doesn't look anywhere but right there. The ball is in the air. We should be breaking now, and we haven't broke. We are breaking. We took our first step forward there, and the ball is in the air. It's, that is on the execution of these two guys right here. We got this. We got this. This guy looked this way the whole damn time. The great thing about zone coverage is eyes on quarterback. You read him. You read him. Poor execution. Damn. Now, Corker almost knocks this ball out. You see it. This ball, see that? That ball gets separated right there. That thing is coming out. That thing is coming out. But he grabbed and he didn't. But so that's seven. Now the offense gotta sustain a drive. You gotta give our boys something. Guess what we do? Bam. What that's a good jump cut by Rose. And this is the longest play of the game by a running back. But shit, I guess C. Ross should get all these carries. Come on. And don't, uh, I have, C. Rod is a great back. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is all I'm saying is you cannot say that he would get on some of these plays more yards than C. than A.J. Rose would get. That's the part that's frustrating. Not like A.J. Rose wasn't the leading rusher last year. It's, it's mind-boggling. We have two, we have three damn good backs. They're going to share the carries. That's a great pull. Now, my, I'm just, I'm wondering if this, uh, we got lucky and we called it or is he reading it? Cause that's a definite pull and you pull it. But I'm confused about sometimes this read option. Now, we are supposed to be reading them because no one blocked them. But sometimes I see no one blocking that read guy and we give it anyway when he's crashing. That's the confusing part. And this is a pretty good call. Not a great throw. We got to catch that. We got to catch that. We got to make, we got to make the quarterback look good. Trust me, I've thrown some bad pass in high school and my boy saved me. You got to catch that. If he catches that, we're at the 20 yard line. We're at the 20 yard line. And it'd be nice that about the 20 yard line on first and 10, Trying to score. Change the momentum of the game. We got to catch that. See, this is again. Obviously, we're not reading this. Because even though he didn't crash. He is slow playing that. I'm taking it. Got to win the one-on-one -on -one battle. This is something as a receiver. The coach is giving you, especially he gave, he, he saw some in Upshaw. Upshaw's got to produce. Coach is, is, is putting the confidence in you that he's going to throw the ball up to you. You got to produce. Now, the first one you did, that one, not so much. We got to get some route running one-on-one. -on -one. How, how to set up DBs because we're not setting them up well enough. That's too much. That's too much. I don't know what are we doing, but that's too much.
they go, I'm going to miss this play because they cut to it late, but they don't get much. We get into third and I think three. That's good fields by the linebackers. We are not reading a quarterback. See, this is linebackers are so important in coverage. And we are not reading the quarterback. And this quarterback is a young quarterback. Look where he's looking the whole time. Look where he's looking. There's only two receivers on his side. Two receivers. He looks there the whole time. We should be breaking on the ball right now. We should be coming forward. And now we just, that's too late. We got to, this is my statement. And I must keep saying this. And I know some people don't understand it. But you got to believe what you see. Then see what you believe. You got to believe what you see. You got to believe that you see in the rock. And in your head, when you see it, you got to believe it. Then you got to just run on it. You got to go for it. You got to go for it. We are too slow in our coverages and reading. That is beautiful right here, though. Everybody's taking care of their gap responsibility. See right here? Everybody has their gap. And now everybody's backside is taking care of their Backside gap. Rice got backside. I think that's Jamin's got backside. Everybody's doing their job. That is beautiful work. That's team defense. It ain't about the guy who makes the tackle. That's about the freaking fans and the stat book. But when you get the greatest thing to happen is when you go see this tape, on whenever they watch game film on Monday or Sunday, whenever they watch it, for the coach to stand up and say, look at such and such doing his job, allowing somebody else to make the tackle. Hey, there's nothing better than getting the, the adulation from your peers and your coach. Man, thank you for doing that and giving me that tackle, man. I appreciate that. Or the coach said, great job, Van, for doing your job, allowing... Somebody else to make the tackle. That's team defense. Second nine, this is another. This is great defense. We rally up. He only gets like a yard after the catch. That's perfect defense. Now, coach calls a perfect blitz. Square pressures him out of the pocket. We glue on to receivers. And now we get the ball with five minutes left. We got to run four minute offense right now. We got to milk this clock and try to get at least three points. Milk this clock for four minutes and get three points. We are good enough to do this. Now, so this is what I want to show you. Remember I said for us that one time, um, Boogie Crash, I think it was Boogie Crash. Watch. This guy crash, this guy replaces. Now, I say this all the time. The other team is on scotch, the other team is going to win. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But you can't stop it. You can't stop reading the thing properly just because you get stopped once. If Navy and Air Force and Army did that. They would start running the triple option, but they don't. Our defense held them to 158 yards thus far. That's not bad, but this is not good. That's a great pull. See, now, he, he doesn't even crash that hard, but this is the thing. When he's not coming for you, as an athlete, he's on the line of scrimmage. He can't stop you. That's 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 great ball work by. Oh, he didn't take it. Oh, jeez, I thought he took it. He fooled me on that one. If he takes that, 
This is the thing. I'm talking about another play. This is the thing. When I was in high school, we ran this sprint option. If the team was playing man to man behind it, I'm taking it because no one is out there. Now, sometimes, like I said, sometimes they can scrape this linebacker over and then it's one on one with me and him. But most of the time, he's not. They ain't man to man. If that guy crashes, everybody's man to man. You're out there by yourself. Now, we are going to barely milk a damn minute off this clock. It's unacceptable. Got the ball with 509. We should have milked this thing to minimum a minute left if we're going to punt it. Rig is open. Rig is open. Rig is open. Now, I'm not sure he gets the first down because Rig isn't probably faster than this guy. But, is this on the coach? Rig was open before the pressure got there. That's not on the big blue wall. That's on. Rig is open. Right now, he's open. Throw him open. He's bigger than this guy. He might be able to carry him across. I want you to just see. He does. One. Two. He knows his man. Three. Rig is open. He's open right there. Back foot in the ground. Throw it. You know it's a blitz. Throw it. Back foot. Throw it. Throw it. All you had to do was lead him to about right here and then see what happens. I hope you see what I see. He's open. There's you do not have to escape. Now, we didn't pick this up as well as we could have, but he is open right now. Throw the ball. <sighs> Frustrating. Now, this is a good blitz by Boogie. Good pressure. Now, we got to stop them. Uh, highlight this play. Carey didn't have his best game. Regurgitation. He has curl the flat. He has hooked the curl. So he should be right here on his ball because that's nothing that's making him get to his curl. He should stay in his hook. He should stay in his hook. Where is he going? Why is he running to the why is he expanding with the running back? That's cheap garbage yards that we shouldn't have given him. That's execution. That's not coaching. That's execution. If the players execute, everything works out fine. No matter how bad the call is, if the player execute, you're fine. Now, here is perfect execution. Isaiah Gibson, great job beating this guy. Let me get second and long. That's great execution. Now, tell me something. So, do you think the coaches didn't coach the, the play before that well? Didn't they coach this well? No. This is attitude. This is energy. This is leadership. This is doing your damn job. So, now we do. Now, we inconsistent. One bad play. Now, one great play. Now, why can't we just stack plays on top of each other like we did against Tennessee? We stack plays on top of each other. They just whooped us. They whooped us up, up front just now. They just whooped us. Gap responsibility. Now, my thing is, I hope this is a blitz. Where is Kerry going? Because the reason why I say that, let's say it was a blitz, okay? If it was a blitz, that's one thing. They, If it's a blitz, 
they got us. They call the perfect play away from the blitz. That's fine, which I'm going to say that's a blitz. But let's just say it wasn't. Carry would actually be right here when Jamin turns to running back back into him. But it looks like a blitz. And look, they call the perfect play. They they were lucky. We blitzed uh, and they, they ran away from the ball. But that's the way to run carry. Second and seven. Reaction is horrible. We got to be looking at the quarterback breaking on the ball. Looking on the quarterback breaking on the ball. Looking at the quarterback breaking the ball. Now, bad play and consistency. We could not stack plays on top of each other. Then we got second and long. We got them where we want them. We got them where we want them. We got them where we want them. That's great team defense. Now it's third and freaking eight. We got to get off the field. Linebackers got to get depth. Got to get depth. We can't become Magnus yet. Got to get depth. Got to get depth. Got to get depth. Make it. Now, remember the Tennessee play where Jamin ran with the guy? And I said that was great read. Well, I think this may be they run a defense where he he runs with number three. <clears throat> but watch this. Boogie. When we learn football, when they bring a guy underneath, there's usually a guy over the top. Offenses attack you in levels. They want you to come here. They don't want to throw this one. They will throw it, but they don't want. They want the chunk play. We got to get depth. Just like Square is getting depth, we got to get depth. We can't become underneath magnets. He magnetized to him and the guy right over the top of him where he should be catches the ball. Linebackers got to get depth. Force them to throw it underneath. Because here's the deal. So I think that was about a 20-yard throw, right? Let's say, I think it's third and eight, okay? Let's say they throw it here. They throw it to this guy, and you come and tackle him right here, which would be about the 30-yard line, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, the 25-yard line. And if you tackle him on the 25, compared to him getting to the 15, that's one less first. That's 10 yards. That's 10 plus yards of real estate they gain. Let's imagine they was down here with the amount of time they have. Make them throw it on the knee. Make them throw it on the knee. Make them be patient the whole game. Decent play. Three yards is not bad. You would like two, but three is not bad. Now this, we're just not ready. We got to get ready. We got to get ready. Now, the great thing about this last series, these last couple of plays, is we didn't give up. Now, this is the play earlier where they got to the goal line. We just was not ready. Oh, oh, I want to, I just, I want to see this. Now, now your boy played a year of safety because we had three great corners when I got here in 93. We had Adrian Sherwood, Willie Cannon. Don Robinson. So I played safety, free safety behind Melvin. Melvin got hurt. So that moved me up the depth chart. <coughs> we got to fill this hole. What are we doing? It's a run. You read the lineman. It's a run. You got to come like a scalding dog. I don't know if you saw Butter Baker last night. You got to come like a scalding dog and hit this. This shouldn't have got further than here. And the reason why I say that, all right, think about it. He's on, Asian's on the five. Wrong tree is on about the 15. They are about equal distance apart. You got to meet him in this hole. You got to meet him in this hole. There's no, you got to meet him. Where's, where's your gap? Because here's the deal. This is what I say about fit. 
The safety's got to know what linebackers are. Linebackers, Square is doing what he's supposed to. He's trying to spill it, or not, he's trying to turn it back in to this guy, to Jamin. This is great handling your gap responsibility, keeping your outside arm free. If I know that, there's no if, because you should. I know that as a safety. I'm not worried about this guy going here because my brother should be handling his responsibility. This is not your responsibility. You should be coming in that gap right now, straight downhill on the, on the track. Straight downhill. Come downhill. You're running laterally for no reason. You should be in that hole. Second thing as a safety. You should always be inside out on the running back. Cause you got a lot of guys over here. You got, you got a linebacker. You got a defensive tackle. You got an outside linebacker. You have a corner. You probably have another safety. You need to stay inside out, force him to them players. Inside out on the running back, downhill. It's that simple. Great job of, of gluing on to receivers and we forced them to kick a field goal. We are fortunate right now to be down 10 to 3. We should be excited as hell going into the locker room. We should come out the second half like, like we just got, like we won the lottery. They outplayed us all game. We should on defense do what we did to Tennessee, had them go three and out. That's all we had to do. That's all we had to do. All right, guys. I kept y'all a little long today. I apologize. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll go over the second half. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to see the replay, you can you can follow me on YouTube at Driving With Styles. Driving W. I think that's a backslash styles. You can follow me on YouTube, subscribe, and you can get all these old videos. Um, like the videos if you want. I appreciate it if you do. But I'll see you guys Wednesday, 8.30 p.m., second half. Thanks for watching.